This is supposed to be blind, but what if it's also deaf? The seven investigators have learned jurors who are deaf are serving on juries more and more. Heather Catalo is here now with what this means for both the courts and the deaf community. Heather? Well, this is certainly very interesting. Judges tell me this is something that did not used to happen. Deaf jurors making it onto a jury to render a verdict. They're thrilled that the courts are becoming more inclusive. And as we discovered, deaf jurors are also changing the dynamics of deliberations. Sets the muzzle on his right leg, right calf, and he pulls the trigger. So Inside the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice in downtown Detroit, judges hold more than 500 jury trials every year. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear testimony from two civilian witnesses. In this recent armed robbery trial, not everyone inside Judge Timothy Kenney's courtroom could actually hear the witnesses. The indictment in this case sets out several charges. That's because for the first time in more than 18 years on the bench, Judge Kenny had the opportunity to seat a deaf juror to help decide this case. I think it's important for um, people who do have disabilities to think that this is not a segment of their life that they're shut out from. The court had two highly trained and certified sign language interpreters ready to go the day juror number 13 arrived for jury duty. They are sworn in and the judge gives them clear instructions that when they're interpreting inside the jury room for deliberations, they can never express their own views on the evidence. They recognize that what their role is and they're not there to provide any editorial comment. So you're familiar with, you know, policy and procedure. After four days of testimony, juror number 13, the deaf juror, was chosen to deliberate with 11 others. They found the defendant, in this case, not guilty. I think every deaf person has the ability to serve on a jury. Leah Scarpacy was born deaf. She, too, was chosen to deliberate a Wayne County arson case in October. I was focused on more of the body language um, because of how they responded to the questions was important to me. Hearing people can hear voice inflection um, and affect, but for me it was more about looking at the body language and seeing how nervous the person was or, you know, if they were casual about the situation. Through interpreter uh, Lindsay uh, Wigan, Scarpacy yeah. tells me her fellow jurors had no experience with the deaf or with interpreters. So she had to set some ground rules during the boisterous deliberations, which helped them all work better together. We gave everyone a number so then they could talk one at a time. And that was a lot more smooth of a process. And then I could know whose opinion it was, who was talking, and get everyone's perspectives. The state of Michigan does not keep track of how many deaf people have served on juries. Officials with the U.S. District Court in Detroit tell us in the last 10 years, they've never had a deaf juror. Do you recognize um, what is up on the screen? Yes, ma'am, I do. Since it is starting to happen more often, the state of Michigan adopted new rules last summer that require additional certification and training for courtroom interpreters. Scarpacy says in her case, they rendered a not guilty verdict, and she would gladly serve again. You know, it's a part of our duty living here in this country. As the state's busiest court, Wayne County issued nearly 87,000 jury summons last year. More than half of those people never even showed up, costing the taxpayers more than $26,000. That's yet another reason why the judges there are thrilled to have deaf jurors that are eager to serve. And they say if you have a disability, they absolutely will accommodate you.